Hello everybody, Professor Gassimi here, and in this component of the lecture, my goal is to take you through browser development tools. For this very quick tutorial, um, I'm going to be assuming that you have access to Firefox. A lot of what I show you will also work in other browsers, Chrome, Safari, etc. But just wanted you to know that if you're using a different browser, there might be subtle differences between what you see me do in the tutorial today and what happens in your system. So remember back when we were talking in the last lecture about how the internet works, we mentioned that everything happens through these HTTP requests. So you visit a website like gassimi.xyz, which is what I have open here. And when you make an HTTP request, gassimi.xyz sends back some HTML, some CSS, some JavaScript, and everything else that you need to sort of display the content in your browser. Well, because you have a local copy of this content, uh, it's on your machine, you can, you can edit this content. You can look at the raw HTML. You can look at the CSS, and you can edit the JavaScript. The way to do that that's easiest is actually by um, using the browser development tools. The way you get access to those is by right-clicking on the web page, coming down to the bottom of the menu, and clicking Inspect. And when you do Inspect, what you're going to see is a, a menu like this pop up. Okay, and this menu contains information on, to start with, the HTML code that was sent. And you can see here um, the HTML code has a head, just like we've spoken about in class. And the HTML code has a body, just like we've spoken about in class. It's also wrapped in this uh, HTML uh, main item, and it has the doc type HTML at the top. OK, the head contains a link to, it has some different meta items here, like we've spoken about in class. It has some style definitions that are done in the head. Not the best practice. They could be imported, which would be better. And then we have some appropriate links to external style sheets that um, you could click here and actually access if you wanted. Right? I can click it, and I can see the particular style sheet in CSS that was used right there. OK, but when you come back to your inspector, um, it allows you to sort of navigate through this HTML and CSS content on any given page. Uh, and what I'd like to do for a minute here is show you how you can use some properties of this inspector to try different things quickly uh, and debug problems. So let's open up the body here real quick. And let's first notice that there is, within this body, um, as I hover my mouse, you can see I sort of a different portion of the screen becomes highlighted. You can see, for example, when I, when I hover over this section right here, um, this everything other than basically the nav bar at the top gets highlighted. What that means is that this section contains everything there in blue. So if I open this up and I kind of navigate down, I eventually get to this image, which has a source, right? I can hover over the source and get the precise location of the image on the server. And there's cool things I can do here, because you can see that there's the source and there's a style. I can come here and I can change properties of this dynamically. I could, for example, make the width instead of 25%, I could make it 10%. And as you see, I've dynamically changed the web page. Right? You could do this with any web page, not just Kasimi.xyz. You could do it with Google. You can open up Facebook um, and, and edit the HTML and CSS they send you. This obviously creates lots of really uh, funny opportunities, such as you could come to, for example, this component, the text I have here, and we could open it, and I could change things about what's visually shown in the text here. I could, for example, say, you know, blah, 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 instead of that line there, and now the web page says blah, 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 instead of the content I had there. You can imagine the kinds of uh, funny opportunities this would give for um, someone with let's say, less than pure intent, taking screenshots uh, of Facebook content or LinkedIn content or random news content. Um, I say this not because of any desire to uh, obviously encourage anyone to do that, but to actually ca uh, caution you that if you see screenshots of web content, just know, as I've shown you here, that it's phenomenally easy to make edits because once you see something in your browser, that content is yours. You have a copy of it. And you can edit it and make changes to it as you wish, as, and as I've just shown you here. Well, what this inspector does is, it again, it gives you these, these kind of wonderful options to be able to explore and see where different components within the, the HTML map onto these and lets you change 
uh, change that and edit it on this side. Now, if somebody was doing their, their HTML and there was some CSS that governs it, for example, the href here, what you would see is some elements that come up here on the right-hand side. You get the, uh, the style component. For example, here you can see we have A. Uh, we open the curly bracket and we have two style components that govern this A href that I'm hovering over. And what I can do is I can turn those uh, off or on or I can edit them. I think, for example, if I come here and... Oh, that's an invalid color, so it won't work. Okay, yeah, that's an example. So you notice that when I came here and I changed the color, the color of all the links here updated as, as a function of me editing it here. So this is a great way for you to uh, understand how CSS properties on a web page that you might want to, for example, borrow from or are inspired by are governing certain things on that web page so that you can use it. Okay, so this shows you some of the HTML pieces that you can use, and then here's some of the CSS pieces. There's other pieces here you can use to understand, for example, the box model, like we spoke about here. If you use a grid, which again, I strongly encourage you to use a grid, you will see elements of the grid model here. If you use Flexbox, flex, the flex model will be contained here, and so on and so forth. All sorts of really wonderful tools for you to understand uh, how the content is laid out, debug it, and interact with it. So this is all I want to show you for the developer tools for now. Um, as we get into the JavaScript component of the course, we will probably revisit these developer tools, um, and we will be focusing a little bit more actually on this next tab over called the console.